Hi again, this is Jeff, and this is the second video in a series on creating quizzes in Moodle. In this video, I'm just going to go through the process of setting up a Moodle quiz, not actually adding the questions to it. Jason's going to cover that in a later video. So here I am in the Moodle for one of my courses, and suppose I want to add a quiz to this course. So the first thing I need to do is turn editing on. And that'll just take it a moment. There we go. And now I have my course divided into topic units down here. And so let's say I want to come down and stick a quiz into, I don't know, topic unit 9. So I'm going to add an activity or resource. And if you've watched Terry's video on adding assignments already, you'll see that a lot of this is fairly similar, at least in the first steps. So here we have the add an activity or resource dialog, and right here is quiz. So I'm just going to click that and say add. And here we are in the page where you set all the options for the quiz. Now note, we're not going to build the quiz questions here. That's later. Right now we're just going to set up sort of the shell that all of those questions are going to be inside. So I'm just going to give it a name. and I'm going to give it a description. And note the red star is telling you that you need to give it a name. You don't need to give it a description. And if you do give it a description, but you want that to appear on the main page, you would click this box here. So now there are many options and it's overwhelming at first but don't worry most of these you won't actually want to touch most of the time so the first thing to think about is the timing you may want to open the quiz at a particular date by default it'll open it when you're creating it and you may want to have a close date, a deadline by which students have to complete it so I'm going to make this say early in April and you can set the time here you can set a time limit if you want I'll say I generally don't but one reason you might set a time limit is that it limits students abilities to communicate with each other during the quiz um, and there is there are different behaviors available for what happens if a student is right in the middle of writing it when their time limit runs out so the next thing is the grade. This just sets where the grade will appear in your Moodle grade book. So you might, if you're going to make use of quizzes, and have a category set up in your grade book for quizzes. I don't because in this particular course I don't use quizzes. Uh, so I'm going to put it into the online lessons. You can set a grade to pass, but you do not need to. This is largely used if you are having, say, uh, their completion and passing of this quiz be a necessary uh, condition for them to go on maybe and do some other quiz. So most of the time you don't need to worry about that. One thing you probably should think about is attempts allowed. The default is one, but you may wish to allow them multiple tries at the quiz, particularly if you're using it for summative evaluation so that you're giving or formative evaluation so that you're giving them feedback. And you can go up to unlimited or whatever you want. And then if you've given them multiple attempts, so let's say you give two, then uh, their grade can be calculated in several ways. The layout you probably don't necessarily need to worry about, but you have some options about how it gets divided into pages, and you can change this while you're editing the quiz and editing, adding the questions to it in any case. And there are many, there are a few other options. Free means that they can go back and forth between questions. Sequential means they have to keep going forward through the quiz. Here is probably the most important part, and this is to do with how feedback is provided. The default is deferred feedback. Remember when I was talking about this, 
and the choice of whether to provide feedback later or immediately and whether you then want to deliver more questions to them. This is the primary place where you set that. So the default is deferred feedback. And that means that they submit all of their questions and they get no feedback at that time. They get the feedback later. There's a, a way down here to affect how much they get when. We'll look at that in a moment. Or you might give immediate feedback, in which case they're getting the feedback from each question immediately after they answer it, but they're still only allowed to take one shot at each question. The more complicated option is adaptive mode. In adaptive mode, they will try a question, and if they get it wrong, they'll be issued a hint and they'll have an opportunity to try it again, usually with a penalty that you set. This is much more complicated because you need to then build the hints into the question, and that makes developing the questions take a lot longer. So if you're new to quizzes, I do not recommend adaptive mode. Deferred feedback is certainly the easiest, but you might shoot for immediate feedback if you're using this as formative evaluation. The review options are always worth thinking about. And hopefully, once you've looked at this a little bit, you'll see what's going on. This is showing what information the student has during their attempt of the quiz, right after they finish, if they come back and have another look at their attempt uh, after they finish but before the quiz has closed, and then after the quiz closed and you can set whether they can see whether they got the right answer, you can set whether they see the marks. If you have set feedback, you can uh, give that feedback or not. If you're choosing immediate feedback, then it doesn't really make sense to not give them the feedback during the attempt. Um, and so on. I'm not quite sure why immediately after the attempt you wouldn't let them see what their own answers were, so I always click those, but I suppose there might be some reason to do that. And I generally do allow them to see whether they got the right answer, but you should think about what feedback you want them to get when. Those are probably the main options you would be interested in. The only other thing maybe to be aware of is here under common module settings, if you're taking a while to build the quiz, you might want to hide it while you're in the process of building it. So when you're finished all of that, you can save and return to the course or save and display. Save and return to course does just what it says. It saves your setup of the quiz and you're going to get booted right back out to your main Moodle page. But I'm going to click in and just show you that the other option is save and display, which will take you straight to the quiz page and here you see no questions have been added yet and that's a topic for one of Jason's videos but this is one way of getting to the place where you would then uh, be able to edit the quiz in other words start adding the questions so I hope that's been useful and once you've been through Jason's videos you should be ready to make quizzes yourself